Uh, I'm the navigator and cook. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm on board for my abilities to cook or navigate, but um, that's for other people to judge. Um, I, I'm an ex uh, sommelier and chef by trade, so uh, feeding the team is as important as putting the boat in the right direction, because if they, if they can't deliver to the gates that we have, what's the point of being any good as a navigator? You've really got to have the team on side, and you've really got to have their bellies full and their, their face, faces smiling. You know? Otherwise, uh, again, why do it? Um, Salient is, is quite a hodgepodge of a crew. Um, the boat was only purchased 12 months ago. So our first race was the Launceston Hobart last year. We'd, we'd never sailed together as a crew. We, we were literally introducing to each other to it on the line. Um, one of the crew was putting gaffer tape on the stern of the yacht and upside down writing the name on the boat so that we were, we were good to go and to be legal. Um, and we've, for a first year program, we've, we've had some pretty good successes. I think we were um, top five for the Lonnie and we had a, a win and, and some top three results in the Bruni Island. We've had a few disasters as well as you do with a new program and, and learning a new boat and finding new and inventive ways of breaking it. But um, we're feeling confident that we're going to probably have one of our better performances in the Melbourne. Um, uh, we're, we're under no illusions of thinking that we're going to be up there with the favourites, but we'll, uh, if we can keep our focus on the moment to moment and, and, um, and really just a step a bit further forward than we have been. We're certainly um, hoping maybe a top 10 if we have a good race, yeah. Um, it was, I was slated to race it on another yacht, uh, Vertigo, Mills 35, who is one of the, definitely one of the favourites. And um, if I was a gambling man, I'd definitely put in some dollars on them. But um, Tim Olding and Claire Olding, she's debuting as the skipper. Um, I mentioned to Tim, to Ian, sorry, that it was the 50th um, and that it was, to me, it was a, it's a far, you do a Sydney Hobart because other people have heard of it. Um, but as a, in terms of purity as a sailor, um, the Melbourne Hobart is a far, um, is a far more complex race. But also, it's a, um, you have to prepare the boat in a far different way. In a Sydney Hobart, if you break something, you've got any number of ports within 20 miles of you. In the Melbourne Hobart, it's often easy to get to Hobart and finish the race because there's nowhere to stop on the west coast that can get help. You know. Um, you know, in most conditions you can't get into Macquarie Harbour. Um, there's no support in Port Davie unless you want to pay for a helicopter. Um, so definitely it's been a really intense few months to get Salient to a condition where she is robust enough to do a, a Melbourne to Hobart. So it's a, to me it's a much more soulful race and I've often said if I never did a Sydney Hobart again, I'd be disappointed, but I'd live. But if I never did a Melbourne Hobart again, I'd be really disappointed because to me that is to me, that's the essence of yachting and where I come from. And, and certainly in my childhood was filled with Melbourne Hobart stories. So, yeah. it's, it's the real race. This is the, this is the race for sailors. To me, it's a race in six stages. Um, you've got the start. It's like any yacht race, the start's important, but you're traveling through the heads of uh, Port Phillip Bay, which is one of the most complex and dangerous transitions, bar transitions you'll ever do in the world. You're, you're sailing from a, what was a, originally a lake that, went over, that poured out over a waterfall. And that waterfall is still there, but it's now 70 metres down. So it goes from 10, 12 metres deep to now 70, 80, 100 metres deep in a matter of half a mile. So, of course, you've got all this water. If it's, if it's high tide on the bay and it's low tide on the Bass Strait, you've got, you know, megalitres per minute falling over this underwater waterfall. And so, of course, you've got these amazing swirling whirlpools and you've got the ability to um, flirt with disaster at a moment's notice. So. So there's the, both the competitive transition from the start, but there's also a safe transition from the start. And of course, in a race like the Melbourne Hobart, then you've got big boats, little boats, so you've got to avoid the other boats, you've got to make sure you've got clear air. Um, and that's only the first 2% of the race. And then from there, you've got the transition through Bass Strait. Now, Bass Strait is, is notorious. Um, they talk about you know, how, how awful conditions are, but it's Western Bass Strait where it really, really puts it on because you've got you've got like the conditions coming from the Southern Ocean. So you've got Southern Ocean swell, usually coming from a southwesterly direction. You've then got wind chop, and then you've got tidal chop. So you can have three sets of waves coming at you at any one time. So it's like living in a washing machine. And, that's, and then, once you've got through Bass Strait, usually you exit somewhere between Stanley and, and Grassy on King Island. And then you're into some, some pretty pure, long swell, lee shore, west coast action. Uh, if it's on the nose, again, it's, it, it can be a very slow and very painful process. From there, once you get past um, Southwest Cape, you've got that usually, what is it, 80% of the time it's a nor'easter up, nor'wester up there, so 
generally you have a pretty quick run from there to Matt Syker, and usually the scariest drive you'll ever do in your life is off Matt Syker. You know, you, you, you could have five, six metre swells, you could have 50 knots, and you're going to have to get that boat through a jibe. You know, some people will be a hero and, and do it traditionally. Um, anything over 30 knots, I'd rather take a few sails on, grain of the boat around and get around safely. I think that seafaring ability, or seamanship as they used to call it, I think seafaring ability is as important as this race as your ability to be competitive. So um, there's that. Storm Bay, um, with its magnificent both geographical and strange weather conditions, you know, you can get a little high pressure bubble form in the middle of Storm Bay for no particularly good reason. So you've got to choose a side, you've got to choose an approach. I think one yacht once went actually up the channel rather than sail up Storm Bay many years ago, back in the 80s. Uh, it didn't go very well for them, but it was, it was ex exciting for us as kids to watch. And then of course there's the Derwent. And that's when you hit it, and how do you go up the Derwent? Yeah. I mean, you've got to spend a bit of time on the water, but more than any race, it's, it's boat preparation. You've got to make sure all your systems are double solid. You know, we've been replacing, we've been replacing steering lines with, um, my father and I have just spent about a week pulling the steering system apart, rebuilding, repairing, strengthening, um, slightly modifying uh, the setup there because you, know, you, you lose your steering on the west coast. You know, that's some, um, yeah, yeah. The results are never good. So um, certainly your, your approach to boat maintenance and boat preparation is, is, is definitely more intense than it would be for a Sydney Hobart because cause you have to get home and you have to finish. Sydney Hobart, you know, if you break something, you stop. West Coast, you've got to keep going. You've got to keep going. And I think also working, you know, with 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 the with the skipper who's got a a hell of a history in elite sport um, and, and and elite coaching in all sorts of areas. To have Ian, although he's a, a newer sailor and this is his first sort of major ocean race, uh, he, he comes comes to it with a, a fair armory of um, of ability to. Uh, to coach us as well, so it's been, I know personally for me, it's been, um, it's been an amazing experience to work with Ian and for him to spot a few of the holes in my armoury and to help me build that up and, and I'm sure he's done that with all the crew. But he does love giving me a hard time. But he seems to handle me giving him a hard time too, so it's a beautiful relationship. This is me at uh, my sailing happiest for sure. <laughs>